Hello there, and welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Halo. It's a TV series for Paramount+. Plus. Now, I should say right off the bat that I'm not a Halo fan, so I think this might be a good pairing for video game adaptions, and, well, I do have an interest in it, so I'll explain real quick. I'm not a fan of first-person shooters, where you just see your gun in your hands. It's not a thing for me. I'm more of a, hmm, a Gears of War, Army of Two type game type guy. So I wasn't a fan of the game in that sense. However, I am a nerd and a you know geek, and over the years I've watched maybe two. What is it? Two of those? Four, let's say about four to eight hours of gameplay footage that the people make for YouTube and put them on as little movies and explanations. So I do appreciate the lore and the mythology that they created in, in, in that sense. And I've read two of the novels. So I'm not a fan of the game, but I'm a fan of the, um, you know, the, the story behind it and the, um, the journey that the series takes to a certain extent. And I'm not too savvy on, the companies that took over the game, and if they're involved in this, there's a little bit of that that I might know, but I'm coming at this as a sci-fi geek watching the show on a franchise slash content uh, adaption of a game that I kind of have an interest in. Not playing the game, but the lore. Like I said, I watched a couple of those. Um, they take all the... Um, CGI cutscenes from the games and they put them into one movie. So I, I'm a fan of that. And like I said, two of the novels I, I read and, well, a third maybe, but it was like an audio thing. So I do have an appreciation for it. So with that, let's talk about the show on Paramount Plus, a live action adaption. And I gotta say, there's a lot to like, but the way it's put together is a little, hmm, it feels a little disjointing, like this was two stories that they blended into one. I don't think, hmm, see, I'm not a big fan of the game itself, but if you're going to take premises from the game, interweave them with, um, you know, your own storyline. I think it could have been done better, but again, this is going to be a recommendation for sure. I want people to recommend, I want to recommend people to watch the Halo TV series, and I think this is more of a thing that's not for me in that sense, although I would watch a season two, maybe. Would the interest be there? Possibly. They got pretty good actors and actresses, but it's the writing. And I think that's where this fails with, with the editor. You wanted to do, hmm, wanted to do some uh, different things here, I think, and you added a subplot on top of a subplot, and it kind of doesn't um, get to the good parts enough and keep you sustained. It feels like I said, there's two different stories here that they just decided to put into the Halo. Well, let's say one Halo story and then an added story. And by the way, there's a scene in this movie between the actress who plays, um, uh, well, I don't know what you call the, I mean, well, let's give props to the main actor, Pablo Schreiber, as Master Chief, uh, John and his um, a portrayal of uh, the character. I have no problems with him. I liked him a lot. And um, it's just uh, you got this character called Quan Ha. Now, throughout the show, I don't think they hmm, I don't think they did her justice. Because what they write for her in her, in her adventures, let's quote unquote, her meeting Master Chief and getting involved, threading her storyline to connect it to Halo and, and our characters in this, 
they sell her short and they don't give her enough because there's one scene with her father. Spoiler alert, the father dies in like the first episode. She's on this journey. Um, they sort of give her a well, she's the last of her people, the Ha family, and uh hmm. Well, she has a destiny they reveal to her. And she gets to talk to her father who passed away, who died in a like a drug induced uh quest, journeys quest, you know, in your mind type thing. And it worked. And it's one of the best scenes in the show. Besides some of the great action scenes and you know just the uh, you know adrenaline pumping stuff that the show does because it does some brutality well. But getting to this character here, Quan, and played by Yaren Ha, it just doesn't work as a whole. But yet you take this one scene and you know the actor has the chops. She's fucking good. And it, it's almost like the Resident Evil TV show I did recently because there is talent is there. Like, the kid actors, all that stuff kind of comes together here now. Again, I'm not familiar with who created the show. So for all, you know, I see the names on the director who directed it and stuff, but it's developed by Kyle Killen and Stephen Kane. And there's some good actors in here and some good situations that, um, you know, really lend well, I would believe, to the Halo fans. Like I said, I'm not a fan of the game. I'm a fan of the law and, and all the, the story itself. So, so I'm a little conflicted here. If the story was told better with a little better editing, I think I'd really like this a lot. As it is now... Um, I'm, 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 I'm happy I watched it. Uh, so there's, there is that. And I'm happy I got to, um, you know, immerse myself a little bit in this type of world. But again, I'm not a game player. So they do do things to pepper in some of the gameplay here and there. But, hmm. I think this is going to fall short with the community of fans. And that's to say that most of my podcasts I do, if I jot down notes and I just make sure I got my wiki open or something, it's after I do my podcast that I'll go watch and listen to other uh, content creators and get their opinions. So I'm trying to guess right now, is this being, um, you know, touted as something the fans are really behind? I'm not sure. Hmm. This is a tough one here. Um, You've got nine episodes for the season. It's not directed by the same person all the time. And one of the writers seems to be always Stephen Kane. However, like I said, there's two different main stories with a couple of subplots added in. And so many subplots just go nowhere and it almost confuses you. Like, what were they going for? There's a Brutality in a, in a um, high stakes feel that gets lost in the in these nine episodes. It doesn't feel like there's much to worry about or or to get involved in. And I get some of the some of the without spoil. Well, you know, I'm not a big spoiler guy, but when you when you understand that the uh, Spartans. You know the guys in the armor. Their um, their past is discovered here, and how they were acquired, and what their purpose is. It's kind of good to a certain extent, where you've got some, um, like I said, good actors, good, you know, a feel to it here and there. But the music is a little bit of an issue. I didn't feel wrapped up in it and sometimes you get this feeling that they're on cheap sets i got this feeling with the uh star wars obi-wan show and maybe your love of you know certain things let you let things slide like a little bit here and there it's like the mandalorian and, and shows like that they tend to 
uh, make best with what they got and put out their product. And this is, I think, another thing, because sometimes this show looks fabulous. And sometimes it feels small, crowded, and on a soundstage. Um, you can't do the motorcycle-type things they did in this show, and it didn't feel right. It just doesn't work. And looking at it as a whole, trying to wrap my brain around it, where was their first season going and where it ended? I'm not uh, super excited in that sense. I like some of the betrayal things, but in, for the most part, the politics stuff, military, kind of interferes. Like I said, it's two different stories blended into one with a couple of subplots that seem like they just started making connective tissue that is not that high quality. So I find myself a little um, perplexed in some circumstances because it's, it was, like I said, I'm happy I watched it. So in that case, it's an enjoyable, um, you know, adventure I went on and I recommend it. But sitting back, I don't feel super excited about a new second season. I find myself uh, wondering why they let some subplots carry on and come back. It, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't feel practical to me. There's something off about the show. And again, it could be just where I sit in this um, audience um, tier, because like I said, I'm not a fan of the games. I don't like first-person shooters, but as a science geek and a nerd, I have done deep dives into its lore, because I do adapt things for my game, and I've said this before, I role-play superheroes and D&D and all that stuff, and sometimes I'll use inspiration from video game material to make it a part of a campaign I'm running, and I've done that with the, uh, you know, uh, Halo, Gears of War, that type thing, and I don't know if it's just my surface level interest in this that just carried me by, and I remember Master Chief so well, and it just doesn't work here. You've got him with his helmet off a lot, and you got to show the struggle of the actor, and it's good. He's really good in the part. I like him a lot. There's um pretty decent side cast, but when they're put on journeys and stuff it feels like you're taken away like you're missing out and it's it's a weird thing to think that this should have been 10 episodes but really should have been only five because you could have just cut out chunks and made this a i think a superb show like i think that's in here so i'm not sure uh you know what an audience um is how it's going to view this type of show. And, again, there's parts in this where you're wondering where you are in the series. So, like, you got to watch nine episodes, around an hour each, and it doesn't feel like everybody was on the same team. And maybe this happens when, um, you know, someone come, has a, a vision and they work with what they got and they do the best they can, and you got to give them props for that. Sure, I could see that being part of my thing here but again i i start seeing um the flaws and the things that draw me out it just doesn't um wow me in that sense and i think the show is supposed to wow you uh the way they open up this series and the way they end it is a little bit too much uh a little bit too much, uh, you know, concentrating on different things that I don't think the audience cares about too much because you'd have to develop these things in a different way. Again, like I said, it's a weird thing to think that this should have been 10 but would have been better off served as 5. So one episode more probably would have tied things together, but that would have been something expertly done by some showrunners or whatever. And I don't think. Hmm. I don't think this would have went there and, and you know, did hit all the, you know, checked all the marks. I think it, it putters and missteps every so often in the show that makes you notice it. And I'm curious to think what a general audience would feel about this and the diehard, there's got to be diehard Halo fans, right? I mean, the game is 
God knows how many, you know, I don't know, fuck, what is it? See, I'm going to be showing my ignorance here, like six Halo games, maybe more, I don't know. And I do know about some transferring of uh, creative power or, you know, how they work in the video game industry. A new company will take over to do the game. And so I'm not too savvy with that. But if I'm looking at this from a creative thing and, you know, I'm watching my Resident Evil shows and I'm going to do my podcast on the um, Lord of the Rings and the House of Dragon type stuff. Uh, this seems like they wanted to make a bid for it. They wanted to show that they can hang with the big boys, and it feels a little cheap at times when it should be, you know, just massively done, which is why I keep going towards this would have been better served off as five. Um, maybe telling certain story angles from different venues, like um, Battlestar Galactica did it, the reimagining. Did it pretty well when at the time they were utilizing the internet and had a lot had a uh, web episodes where they filtered in like things that were going on and it felt like it was added in for our benefit. I feel like the things that are added into this or what I perceive to be added in, I don't think they're for our benefit. I think it's for this someone's vision of what they where they want this show to go. I know a little bit about it enough to know that. Like the Mandalorian, you don't really get to see his face. And when it's done in the game and the cutscenes in the game, it's supposed to be impactful. And here I feel they, you know, the way they told the story, they had to do things that were forced. And I think you could have settled back a little. So, like, there are, the Mandalorian has many flaws. But when the Mandalorian reveals himself, his face to... Baby Yoda, Grogu, you can feel it. You can tell audience all around were like captivated. Whatever audience it had, that the, it was worth it, right? That you can you get there. Here it feels like, hey, let's get this out of the way. This actor's good. You know, who knows how hard it is for actors? You know, they're in this big suit. Some of it might be CGI, whatever. And they've got to do these you know, amazing action scenes. Is it worth it? You know, not to get the full range of emotion when you want to, you know, concentrate on what the character's going through, and he's just in this armor, and you can't emote in that. So, I mean, I get it, and I'm telling you again, this guy is really good. Uh, what's his name? I've seen him in stuff, too. You know one of those actors? You, you just see him in stuff? Uh, Pablo Shriver. Shriver. And, um, you know, he's on The Wire, apparently. Uh, Law and Order. American Gods, I think, is the last thing I might know him from. But he's really good, and he's one of those actors you want to like, you want to get along with him, and you want to ride along, and, um, you know, see his ups and downs, and it does work on a certain level. Again, I just think there are two visions here and, and a compromise that doesn't pay off. Again, just because you have this... Um, talented actress you want to call her Yaren Ha playing Quan Ha there's um there's a limit and a way you can do it where you put it on the back burner but you make sure we recognize how important it is and I don't feel like they did it well it just it's just a little odd and like I said when you're watching this it just feels a little um like I said, it doesn't feel like it really paid off what it was trying to do. But I'd like to hear what people think. Again, this is one of those shows. I'm not angry that I've watched it. I'm not upset and, you know, wondering, like, the Resident Evil. Like, what the fuck did they do? Um, I think, I think this could definitely... Well, see, because I watched the last episode... I think this can go somewhere with course correction that would really impress the hardcore fans and get new people in. And is that maybe the whole point of these adaptions and like some of the missteps had that happen in this industry, whatever you want to call it? Is it that desire to say, hey, you know, we have a certain amount of fans we got to please, but 
we got to get new audiences in. And how do I get the, you know, this demographic and stuff? And I think that's part of it. And this is the new territory we're in, in this age of streaming services and um, pandemics. And, uh, you know, got the Spider-Man movie, broken records in a pandemic. Like, it, you know, I made so much money, but there's a change that happened. Like, it's not totally back together. And whereas one of my podcasts I did saying this would have been better served as, you know, uh, a Netflix series. And I think this was... Uh, Black Panther 2, the issues I had with that. I think you take a page out of Serenity's, you know, book. And the Serenity movie really nailed it, in my opinion, when you give somebody a chance to, you know, tell a story in a, let's do a quote-unquote failed TV series, right? So I could see this happening here. So there's quality here, things that could be carried on, whether they decide to, you know, end this year and do two-hour special movies or streaming movies like um, Predator, what they did with Prey. It can definitely work, and it can definitely capture people. I would be interested, because like I said, I'm so interested. I'm just not excited. And I think you could have cut out a lot of things or maybe just added something that really tied it together and had an editor go through this. You know, in my in, in the movie in my head, this went a little bit different, and I started wondering when I'm getting back to certain things, and I don't know, you know, you got shows that try to do things like Game of Thrones did, and I'm not the biggest fan of Game of Thrones, but I can see the quality in that, and the, um, the high bar it sets, and TV shows want to emulate that, and, and draw upon that, and Again, I mean, this is that thing, you know, when I'm I, when I was 20, my sensibilities change, right? But not so much. I think, you know, there is something that catches all the audiences. And uh, a quick aside, I read something recently about an inner memo going around Marvel and how they might want to change things up and whatever. That's all good because, to me, Marvel has not made many missteps. And the quality of their movies are so good that their audience is, you know, been treated well in that sense. And yes, you know, looking at it from another point of view, it's the same type of thing and, you know, the structure. But it's working for the audience they're going for. And they are doing a good, I have a good way of bringing in new audiences. And this is sort of a misfiring but there's some good stuff here, some potentially great stuff. You know, when this opens up and you see the effects and the, the brutality of it, and I'm impressed, and it just kind of loses itself. And then, like, towards the end, it kind of gets back on track, right? And you're like, holy shit, you know, I could have been there. I could have been all, all, I could have been excited along every step. And I think when you're trying to bring these your audience on these steps with you, it can be done better. And I think that's like the point I'm making. There's one episode which goes back after you know certain things happen, and you concentrate on Quan again. And I, again, it's like by episode seven, you don't know what the fuck you know is really going on, and in, in a little bit of an annoying way, because to be honest, you start hating the character of Quan. It just doesn't work, and as much as, you know, uh, the actors in this supporting cast are good, and she's great because in the same fucking episode that's highlighted for her and her history and her destiny is one of the best scenes in the movie with her and her father. It's quality stuff. So this actress can do it. The directors and stuff can pull it out of them. I just don't know where they lost track, where they kind of meandered a little bit too much here and just didn't really wow an audience. But again, this could be just a misstep with the building blocks and a good foundation. And I think that's where I would kind of sum this up as you, you've got a decent foundation, but it has to be course corrected because it really goes in a bad place at times. And it's just because you've got such fabulous 
um, actors and actresses and some amazing set scenes and uh, special effects here and there. You know, there are beloved characters and creatures in the game. And you got to bring them in and weave them in with this story about, you know, humanity's destiny in the future and alien technology and past secrets and things coming to light now. And there's something of value there in this, in this show. It is a little bit of wonder. It does communicate that. It does it well at times. But again, I would probably rant a little bit more about this if I was secure of my position in this nerddom here. And where do I fit as a real fan or as just a lover of sci-fi and good stories? I think I'm, you know, I'm just caught in between watching something that my mind is going, you know, the fans of the game are really going to love Twenty uh, percent of this, but they're gonna be indifferent to forty percent and hate, like you know, like another forty percent. Like there's that type of thing going on in this show. But I'm gonna give it a recommendation. I'm gonna say it might be something worth watching. This tried to do things. I'll give props for that. Again, like I said, you your writers are really probably the weak point here. Could have been tightened up with a editing better, but. As, mu- as annoyed as I am at the character of Quan and this fucking journey they're putting us on with Soren, there's a moment where you're captivated by her and her father talking, and like I said, it's the spirit of her father on the journey. And it's fucking awesome. And it's not something I really give a fuck about. Like, you know, um, her journey here is not too interesting to me. You know, you're going to put this character in Quan, and she's going to be, you know, we're going to use her on the journey and her interaction with Master Chief at the beginning. And then, you know, the connective tissue between John and her protector, Sora. It kind of, it works, but I don't know, just a little too much here, a little too much there. And then you made a misstep here and they become evident to me that I don't really think makes this a superb show. I don't think this is going to be um, critically acclaimed uh, and a consensus of people who are just eager and chopping at the bits to get season two. If that's its mistake, if it's canceled, I don't know. Because I did uh, find out that while I was you know, doing my Resident Evil Netflix show thing that it was canceled already. And it's almost evident throughout the show, like, Someone wasn't paying attention. They had their own vision. They were sticking to it. They didn't give a fuck what people said. Got it done. Hey, you like it? No, it's canceled. I think this can easily be course corrected. There's enough here that I'm interested in. You know, there's enough here that I'm actually um, paying attention to and drawn into. Um, you know, what's this guy who plays Sauron? Um, uh, Brokeem Woodbine. And he's actually pretty good. And he's uh, saddled with Quan. Like I said, it's the writing because as you, know, you start to really not like Quan's distraction from the Master Chief story. It's not connecting easy and well enough and giving me the confidence of to, you know, immerse myself in me if it's subconscious or not, whatever. You know, the Halo TV series on Paramount Plus is a mixed bag, and I'm even more curious now to go do my deep dive and see how this was viewed. Because I can tell already the sensibilities of some of the um, content creators that I like and some that I don't, but I still watch their stuff because, you know, you always got to question yourself and where you sit and, you know, what your beliefs are and that type thing. And, I I actually believe this can be a good series. I believe that this can be a, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just things that didn't, or a little rocky at first. And I think I talked about this because of the showrunner on Resident Evil. Supernatural, like 15 seasons, right? It's hard to get through that first season of Supernatural, in my opinion. But once you do, 
but captivated for seven, eight seasons. And, you know, I can see that with this. I can really see this working. You've got some breakthrough acting type um, portrayals in here that mixed in with some bad writing. People doing their best with what they're told to do. Without a doubt, I recommend this. And I just think that there's a little bit of um, cheap or fakeness. There's something for me wrong with this show. And again, it's... You know, not to say like, um, um, you know, someone ruined this show, like uh, the movie I watched, Nope, right? Um, they decided to bring a sister character in and she just fucking drew me out of the movie. I was ready for a different tone. And I think this show started off with the right tone. It got me interested and uh, hyped up and it kind of was a letdown. And yeah, I guess, you know, you gotta, you know, plan this story out, but I have a feeling nine episode thing is this weird to me. It feels it feels a little I don't know. It I don't know if I could decide that it was should have been shorter, made longer, better. It's got that feel to it, like um the two different teams working for two different purposes and someone's job was to just piece this together and make it connect and it just didn't wow me. But I'm gonna say again, I recommend the show. Uh, you know, sci-fi geeks uh, point of view um, you know from a general you know audience that will not be so familiar with the characters and all that stuff I think it can work I think it's worth to watch you might find that you even like it more than I do and you know uh, find some of the stuff that I find distracting um, good lulls in the, in, the, in the storytelling right it could be made and I think I I'd rather be honest in that sense and say, I think that's where this goes. I think people are going to like this for sure. And there's going to be aspects of this that, um, you know, hit home for a lot of people. But I think doing the little bit of things I looked on, you know, when you look at these wikis and stuff, is that um, this is not, you know, when I say things like canon, you know, like, it just doesn't work when your people come out and say this is a different timeline. We're calling this the silver timeline. It's not the I don't know what do you want to give it a name like the alpha timeline, whatever for the games. And hmm, you know I don't know. Uh, it just I think it has enough in there. I think there's enough love and attention to detail. That you can pull this out. You can make this a good to great show. I think the elements are there. I think people will gravitate to one thing or another. You know, um, I think it's, it could be worth it. You know? And again, yes, you gotta do an adaption. You can't just have fucking first person shooter. What is that movie called? Hawkeye Henry or whatever? You know, uh, it's just a failed experiment, but glad you watched it in a sense like someone tried to do a first person fucking movie and just said fuck it let's do it and from beginning to end they did it and it just gives you a headache it's like and maybe we're not ready for it you know this is uh storytelling of the next level i don't know am i missing that out on that much but halo paramount tv show you know i'm gonna recommend it i'm gonna say this quality here there's things to attach yourself to and love in the show. And the, from what I can tell, I, I just think it has a little bit of weak writing and, you know, bad editing here and there. Or maybe not bad editing, bad connective tissue. Well, there were times that cutting to black kind of annoyed the fuck out of me and jumping to something else. But, you know, some great portrayals here. The, the mother, the Halsey, doctor... I wasn't too impressed with the storyline they're weaving in there. And it just, um, you know, you're watching it play out and you're adding other things and you're going back and forth. It's like not an easy job. And I just would have streamlined it more for Master Chief story, get it in there, maybe do one or two episodes. Because I have a feeling that if you would have tightened it up or did some wacky stuff, whatever the fuck, 
And by the third episode, you have that scene with Quan and her father. There's going to be a real appreciation for her storyline. You can really see they nailed it. I mean, again, it's such a quality scene, but is it needed? Is it, you know, you know do we have to go through all the shit we did already to get there? You gotta do tonal shifts, right? Being brutal at one point and then, you know, talking quips and being a wise ass here and there and showing this uh, growing tension and an admiration between uh, Soren and Quan. I mean, there's stuff to like there. Just thinking a little bit more attention to, um, you know, better pacing and flow would have really polished this up a little bit. So I guess I'll end that here with, you know, nine episodes, a Halo TV series by Paramount. It's something I recommend to watch if you're a sci-fi geek type thing and you're a fan of the games and to a certain extent. And if you're like me who don't like the games just because of the mechanics of them, but just pour over all the mythology and the lore, uh, you know, I could see there being a mixed bag of disappointment and, you know, admiring certain things about the show. So. You tell me, go out and watch it. It's nine episodes, just about an hour long, and I, I think I find enough here that I, like I said, I'm not super excited about the next chapter here, but I could see it being um, corrected and streamlined and really taking the feedback and making it work. So there you go, Halo, Paramount Plus original series. You know, kudos for them for trying, putting it out there. I'm not sure when I finish this and time goes by, I'll know if there's going to be a second season, if I have some interest in it. Like, fuck Picard season three. I give no fucks about, you know. The season one or two is just so shitty to me. Um, I don't care if you're bringing back the old cast and whatever. But I can see this being something that will interest me. It'll peak me, you know, my interest back up and... You know, course correct this thing a little bit. You could have a really good show on your hands. You got people who can obviously carry the scenes. Like I said, I don't even fucking like Quan's character in this, but that scene with her and her father is superb. It gets you. It's distinct and tells you the point of her destiny. You should have gotten here much quicker. Now you didn't need the antics. But give it a shot and let me know. I'll talk to you all next time. Till then, take care, everybody.